want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Steve Trucker here. Right, today, what are we gonna be talking about? I think today is gonna be a update video on my thoughts on the DAF after all, after about a month and a half of driving her. But before I get cracking, I want to give a big shout out to another YouTuber. He's nearly a thousand subs and I would like to get him over it if possible. I know I'll have very little effect, but I want to give him a massive shout out because he's worth all the check out if you haven't already. And that is the Wittwing Trucker. I will try and maybe add a something here or check the uh, comments or description of the video down below. It'll be probably in there. Also, as another quick update, I have got a 360 camera, which no, it's not up in the background. You might be able to see where where the mount is that I'm going to place it. I'm going to be experimenting over the next few weeks or so with it. So I have put a sort of video up of just the cab view thing. If you want to have a view that you can sort of pan around, zoom in on, I've put it on my Facebook as well. So if you want to go and check it out, tell me what you think about it as well. Comment down below, you know, if you have seen the video and checked out the Facebook. Please check out the Facebook one, because that is interesting, I think, the capabilities of what that can offer. Oh, no, we can't pull out just yet. So, yeah, that's, that's the uh, admin for the channel done, I believe. And let's get cracking on with the video. <laughs> right. What did I think of the DAF so far? I, I still like it. I like to add, I want to add, make that really, really obvious that I still like the truck. I, but I do have niggles with her. I do have niggles and there is a few issues with her. And we're gonna start off with the first issue. Oil, oil burn. She eats oil. And it's the same with the other De deaths in our fleet they seem to be eating oil so that is one thing coming from a Scania which is a bit of an eye opener because with Scania you normally get away except for on the rare exception you know till the next service sort of thing with, with the Scanias but with this you know, she goes for it like so I had to top up about 6 litres literally the other day so yeah, that'd be probably my number one general niggle. Uh, number two, other issues I've had. Um, with the stereo unit, I've mentioned this before, that on my steering wheel controls the stereo unit, the volume rocker will, if you're trying to lower down the volume, will raise the volume, or, or, and, as it can do both at the same time, change track. Go figure. And it's intermittent, so sometimes it works perfectly normally. Then other times it'll just do that constantly. You know, and when it's changing track, it can also do it when you're trying to raise the volume as well. Um, also, the speakers can bop, can start getting a bit tinny once you go over about 30% on the volume, which is okay, you know. But if you like loud music, it can become a little bit distorted and tinny. But the speakers are pretty good in the truck though, it's not the worst audio system, you know, and tape system in, in the world, it's actually pretty good, it's just got a few little things, the main thing is with the controls. Other issues, um, storage locker up there, the air ram that meant to hold the locker open when you open it, that's not working so we need to get that rectified. Um, loose bolts is the other one. I think I'm on top of it now, but uh, initially I think I've well, posted this on my review, reference to loose bolts. 
still find the odd one now and again. Which, uh, a little bit surprising on the new truck. And I want to go back to oil thing. I am aware that it could be the wet running, so I'm open-minded with that, but also speaking with people who have older DAFs, it seems to be a common a common uh, issue, <laughs> let's say. Certainly if you come from Scania's, so you'll notice that one. Uh, other issues. Um, I have disconnected the blind spot since, uh, thing because of it being so distracting. It, yeah, it just drove me up the wall. <laughs> I mean, it was beeping when there was nothing there most of the time, to the point, even if it beeped for something that was there, I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> well, you know, there'd be a chance that I wouldn't believe it would be, you know, and it was just distracting, you know, because every time I'll be checking, going, what's there, what's there, nothing there, and you know the time that you ignore it, there'll be something there, so there was no point in uh, doing that, so while well, the other drivers figured out how to disconnect in the fuse board area, so we've done that. And I just put that down to pure health and safety there. That uh, I wasn't doing too malicious, it's a good idea that system, it's just pure, poorly Im implemented. You know, poorly designed. You know, it would have been better if I had a button that you can sort of knock it off and but you can knock it on when you think actually I might need it on here. We're entering into a city. The other thing is it only works below 20 mile an hour, so it's it's not like it's an aid when you're on the motorway that it could detect maybe a car that's sat in that area. I think what would be a better system is a bit like what cars have in the mirrors. The, the blind spot detectors on cars that lights up your mirror or gives you a signal on your dash maybe in a truck would be probably a better idea. So you have a light on the left, light on the right, when there's something in your blind spot on your right your lights up and vice versa. Maybe an idea there to improve that. Um, anything else? I mean things I like about the truck hasn't really changed, I love the cab. Love the storage. It's yeah, it's definitely a driver's truck at the end of the day. It's 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 a nice, comfortable space to be living in. And I would like to add, every truck has niggles. You know, even Scania's have niggles and problems and issues and little gimmicky things. Uh, well, the other issues that well the other drivers have brought up with me, which I fully agree with them, is with the weight transfer button. It would be nice if they had a light on it, so when you activate it, you know it had kicked in. Because you kind of have to rely on it lifting up the axle and giving the axle light to give you any form of comp knowledge that it has done what it's doing. But aside from that, you have no idea if it's done it or not. You have to just assume it's doing its thing. Um, b -b 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 anything else? Uh, but there is other issues, but it's also linked into the fact that this is an older design of truck frame. So the body is, you know, it's been there for what? Quite many a year. You know, longer than I've been driving, you know. Which means when you get out of the cab, there's a habit of water coming down and into the cab when you open the door because of the older design. That's probably a little niggle compared to top line. You know, better if they had some sort of guttering or something to stop that from happening or limit it down as best as possible. I've also ordered some window uh, deflector things for the window so I can open the window slightly while we're driving and stop anything coming in. So that would probably help a little bit as well if you want to open your window stop stuff rolling down in. <laughs> um, anything else? Uh, aside from that, uh, I'm just trying to think if anything else is going to come out of me. Oh yes, Active Yellow Airline. As a tanker operator with using way systems, what we have to do is either use a bungee on the parking brake to pull it down, to hold it down, 
deactivate the active yellow airline when we're parked up when we're loading because we need to have the rear trailer able to freely weigh itself when the brake's on it won't you know won't weigh accurately and by no means at all you know or what you've got to do is disconnect the yellow airline I would like to probably see either a spec that doesn't have an active airline when you're parked up or some sort of button that activates it but maybe has a safety thing so when you release the parking brake it automatically turns it back to being an active yellow airline or you know turns that system off automatically so even if you forgot you press that and you go to drive off it it's all safe it, it'll go off and maybe give you a, a message up in there if it did fail so not check you know your yellow airline you know the activation button whatever you want to call it you know was a coming One. There's been many trees falling down as well over the last few days. So yeah, I think that's a lot of the bulk of the issues with the truck. I mean, there probably is going to be some more and I'll give you an update video in, in the future. I mean, uh, I saw some actually it's been pretty good. And some of the negatives aren't deal breakers by no means imagination. It's just stuff that could be improved upon or made a bit better. And it, you know, the storage is, is very good in here. It would be nice maybe if we look a bit more driver storage compartments that you can, like drawers and stuff, maybe like that. But uh, it's not too bad. Um, aside from that. Da -da -da. Oh yeah, and also to make the bonnet release lever more obvious where it's located, you know, might be good. I was fortunate I said I'll show you where it was, but if I didn't, you could be searching around for it for quite a while. <laughs> and if you're not too sure where it is on the DAF, go and check out my DAF uh, review video, it, I did highlight it on that video. So uh, if you are looking for the DAF bonnet release lever, Go and watch my review. I'll try and link the review to this somehow. Probably for a tag or something. If so, it'll be somewhere in this at the moment. Uh, anything else? I think, yeah, I think I've covered the bulk of the issues that I've had. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it with it, to be honest. Uh, so it's not, as, I, as I've already said, I'm, I'm impressed with the truck. It drives well. Um, I suppose the only other thing I would add is that she can be very lethargic on the power output, but that's because of her design. You know, she's designed to be economical. And she is really economical in terms of what she can deliver terms of range of fuel and that but that's as long as you're driving to its economical capabilities if you're fighting the economical capabilities of the truck it will probably logically probably do the opposite but it's still fairly economical even when you're trying not to be economical <laughs> you know it is a little bit frustrating when you are fully laden and trying to go up a hill when in a, a top line obviously like 580 that I had last you know you could probably get up the hill reasonably pretty well with it you still struggle a little bit but not as much as this can but still it, it, it's a good truck as a whole you know there is issues but some can be easily rectified and or made better and I have highlighted the uh, steering wheel controls to DAF and I have tried to fix it I'm going to mention it again when it goes back in because they have not obviously fixed it. And uh, hopefully we'll get down to the bottom of that issue. Um, as far as that, you know, if you have any comments, any thoughts on the DAF, any issue, if you drive a DAF, 
have you had any issues? Have you had similar issues? Or, you know, do you agree? Do you disagree? You know, what's your thoughts? Also, as I said at the beginning of the video, please go and check out the Whittering Trucker. You know, he is a good truck vlogger. You know, if you like, like my channel, you'll probably definitely like his channel. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and also go and check out, even though I'm sure you all have subscribed to uh, Trucker, I think it's DD2012 and Trucker Haley. I believe and I'll try and link the stuff into this video as well even though I know that bit of the shout out probably won't be beneficial because as I said I think most people would have followed what from uh, the road legends have meant G gave him a massive shout out like Jenko and all that so yeah aside from that all's good I would like to say apologies for lack of slight content lately I've just been really busy a bit tied up with stuff. As I said, I'm trying to experiment with my new camera, the 360 camera. I know it's it could be a bit of a taste, you know, and it might not suit everybody. Don't take the video that I put up on YouTube as the gospel of what it could be used for. I'm also thinking about doing a 180 sort of filming. More designed probably for people who watch this on the phones and on the iPads so you can sort of look around while I'm chatting away, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> but I think the capabilities of a 360 cap camera could be quite interesting and what it could do, you know. And I just find it fa fascinating on the videography sort of sense, you know. And, you know, and just could just add a bit more flavour to the channel, depending how I implement it. But at the moment, I'm in the experimental stages of it, so there will be content coming. Bear with it, it doesn't mean it will be the gospel content, it'll just be probably me trying out different camera views with it, seeing how it might work on vlogs if I can. You know, and if it doesn't, you know, I can see things it will work really well with, but there's still a lot of questions on how it could work with certain things. And the other question is the amount of editing that it will take to do as well. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Because the video I put up with it was just straight off the app sort of thing. That's why I had no music and that. It's just more just to gauge what people thought. But, as I said, just try and check out the Facebook version, because it, it's really good on Facebook, because you can just sort of look around it, pan around at your will and zoom in and stuff like that. And it, it, to me, it, it's pretty cool, you know. I kind of like things like that as well. Or oh, I find it fascinating. So, yet again, I would like to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. You know, it is seriously appreciated, all your support. Also, uh, please go and check out my Facebook, my Instagram. Have I mentioned all the social media? I do have a Twitter as well, but not overly active on Twitter. I will openly admit. Um, I'm probably more active on Instagram, but also Facebook secondary as well. Uh, I am looking at, I have set up a sort of page thing on Facebook, I'm still working that out how I'm going to work that page. I am also considering maybe the website idea I think I mentioned on, on one of my update videos, that is in the pipeworks as well. How I will do that, if I do it and all that. I've also got somebody who's uh, who does printing and such like, who's got in touch, so there might be some options for some prizes or giveaways on that front as well, and obviously maybe even, you know, this is going well ahead now, you know, maybe an optional merch maybe as well, but uh, we'll see where it goes, and, but I wouldn't mind to get maybe a t-shirt made up or a shirt like this with a collar if they can you know, with my logo on, you know, and maybe some stickers. So that's probably about it with the other bit of update, which I thought I'd just add in at the moment. 
Um, anything else to mention? I mean, I think we're all sorted on the Edmonton front. I, I want to say yet again, I'm, you know, it blows me away, all my subscribers, and also to um, Max's photography as well for his level of support of the channel has been amazing and uh, please go and check his channel out as well I know I've given him a shout out already seriously go and check out his channel you know give him uh, some uh, support smash his subscribe button and uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please smash my subscribe button as well hit the like or dislike and if you do dislike any of my videos please comment down below why you've disliked it because feedback means the world. If you say, actually, I don't like 360 videos, because I notice I have a few dislikes on that. And, you know, what is it you don't like about it? Or, you know, are you completely against 360 images? And if so, just try and explain why limitedly, if you want, you know, uh, as much as information is always helpful. So if you are interested in 360, but you don't want anything in the cab with 360, that could aid as well. Not many I won't do anything in the cab, but it tells me what, what, which direction my fan base wants me to go with certain things. Because I want to involve yourselves in the channel as much as possible. Because I do find it amusing when people dislike a, a video, and yes, you can assume maybe what it might be, but assumption isn't always the best way to go. I know 360 might be acquired taste, but that was, just, as I said, just the general test of the system, just to see, hey, how it goes down. Hopefully, you know, from this video, if you're able to give me some feedback either on this video or on the video with the 360 on, then just tell me what you think. If you do like the idea, tell me why you like the idea, you know, if you have any ideas, it's always appreciated, so I'm looking off to the left for some reason, aren't I? So, uh, I will probably catch you in the next one, but yet again, I'd like to say a massive thank to everybody, so, uh, I will catch you in the next one. I'll do it in a minute once I made this turn. <laughs> Because it's a bit of a tight road, this one. You have to be aware of people flying around. So, as I was about to say, I'll say a massive thank you yet again. And I'll see you in the next one. Over and out.